Okay, we're talking about, this is part two of the United States as a Crown Colony. And um, let's get going. Uh, notice my new website uh, that's up and running now for anybody that's interested. Um, so let's get going. Uh, this is actually taken from Yale Law School, the Avalon Project. And this is the Treaty of Paris, uh, Paris Treaty of uh, September 20, 1783. It's called the Definitive Treaty of Peace. And the highlighted part is the part that I want to bring your attention to. It's saying, um, it having pleased the divine providence to dispose the hearts of the most serene and most potent Prince George III. By the grace of God, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, uh, uh, Defender of the Faith, Duke of Brunswick and Lundberg, Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire and of the United States of America. Well, get a load of that. Now, think about it, people. Um, if um, they don't put that stuff in every treaty that, that Prince George or King George was involved in, first of all, the reason they put it in here is because it's material, okay? Because it's this war, the War of Independence, was involving the Vatican. The Vatican is the one that was making the war. And King George was their tool, okay? <laughs> Which is really what he was. He was their tool. And, uh, and that's why they put in there that he is arch-treasurer, and Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire. That's the Vatican people and of the United States of America. So the uh, the trust is a Vatican trust. It's all under Roman law. That's true. It's a trust. That's what was set up as a trust. And um, so um, then the same treaty in Article 4 says, it's agreed that the creditors on each side shall meet with no lawful impediment to the recovery of the full value in sterling money of all bona fide debts heretofore contracted. And uh, there shall be a firm, Article 7, there shall be a firm and perpetual peace between uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the king and the said states, which is a lie because they intended to make war. They intend to continue to make war. It's perpetual warfare. And it's all coming from the Vatican. King George the Tyrant, uh, he's the King of France and England, it says in there. Let's go back to the first one. It says, uh, uh, George the Third, by the grace of God, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland. Okay, well, I don't know how many of you remember this, but France loaned a bunch of money to the United States to finance the War of Independence. Matter of fact, uh, there's another treaty that we're going to go into here in a minute where uh, the United States agreed to pay France 18 million livres, which was, I guess, some sort of French currency or uh, money. Anyways, um, so King George financed both sides of the War of Independence. And, and if you think he was the arch treasurer and prince elector of the Holy Roman Empire, well, then he was using Vatican money. That's exactly what's going on, people. He's using Vatican money. It was from the Vatican. Um, anyways, he's arch treasurer and prince elector of the Holy Roman Empire and of the United States of America. He, uh, the tree was authorized as an agent of the Vatican. And now, if you think about it, Queen Elizabeth is the successor to King George the Tyrant. So it's Queen Elizabeth the Tyrant is now arch treasurer and prince elector of the Holy Roman Empire and of the United States of America. The Vatican seized the Crown Corporation when they couldn't pay their debt to the concession, with the concessions to the Pope in 1213 and the subsequent Magna Carta 1215 when the people rebelled. See the first United States as a Crown Colony video. Also see the martial laws here video. Martial law always comes with Roman law in the Vatican. And the Vatican decides who is going to be president. Well, think about it. He is Prince Elector of the Holy Roman Empire and of the United States of America. So he is uh, um, um, he's the one that decides who's going to be president. And so this is actually People uh, versus De La Guerra, uh, uh, California Supreme Court case, 1870. It says, it's evident that they have not the political rights which are vested in citizens of the states, 
They are not constituents of any community which is vested with any sovereign power of government. They're talking about U.S. citizens here, people. Their position partakes more of the character of subjects than of citizens. They are subject to the laws of the United States but have no voice in its management. They are allowed to make laws of validity. These laws is derived from the sanction of a government in which they are not represented. Mere citizenship they may have, but the political rights of citizens they cannot enjoy. Okay, and so this is talking about U.S. citizens, people. Elec the elections are a charade. They're a fraud. The, the queen decides who's going to be uh, president. This is taken from the Law of Nations by Vitell, Book 1, Chapter 19, Section 213, page 87. Look it up, people. Residents, as distinguished from citizens, are aliens who are permitted to take up a permanent abode in the country, being bound to the society by reason of their dwelling in it. They are subject to its laws so long as they remain there, and being protected by it, they must defend it. Although they do not enjoy all the rights of citizens, they have only certain privileges which the law or custom gives them. Permanent residents are those who have been given the right of perpetual residence. They are a sort of citizen of a less privileged character and are subject to the society without enjoying all its advantages. Their children succeed to their status for the right of perpetual residence given them by the state passes to their children. And again, this is talking about U.S. citizens, people. They are the residents. This is men, state versus Manuel. Uh, uh, the term citizen of the United States is analogous to the term subject in the common law. Uh, uh, U.S. versus Anthony, the term resident and citizen of the United States as distinguished from a citizen of one of the several states in that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. Congress created their U.S. citizen slaves. All elections are territorial. In order to vote, you have to register. State citizens don't vote. U.S. citizens vote. Doesn't matter. All elections are rigged and a fraud. State citizens are the only ones living under free government whose rights are incapable of impairment by legislation or judicial decision. That's Supreme Court, Whining versus New Jersey. State citizenship is a vested substantial property right, and the state has no power to divest or impair these rights. And, uh, and see more. For more information, see the citizenship video, people. There are two ways to conquer and enslave a nation. One is by sword. The other is by debt. This is the Virginia Company. Remember back in, uh, this is talking about in 1606, the Virginia Company was chartered with the purposes of establishing settlements in the coasts of North America. All corporations, as corporations, the companies were empowered by the crown to govern themselves, and they ultimately granted the same privilege to their colony. In 1624, the Virginia Company failed. And so, let's see what that means. What that means is, in 1624, the Virginia Company went bankrupt. It was liquidated and its assets were seized by the creditors. All corporations are a fraud. And this is all coming from the crown. The, uh, uh, the treaty between the King of France, which was King George and the 13 colonies of the United States of America signed at Versailles on June 16, 1782. This is another treaty that was signed as a result of the War of Independence. And Article 1 says, it is agreed and certified that the sums advanced by His Majesty to the Congress of the United States under the title of a loan in the years 1778, 1779, 1780, 1781, and the present 1782 amount to the sum of 18 million of livres, money of France, according to the following 21 receipts. And I took the receipts out because there wasn't room to put them in. By which receipts the said minister has promised in the name of Congress and in behalf of the 13 United States to cause to be paid and reimbursed to the Royal Treasury of His Majesty on the 1st of January, 1788, at the house of the Grand Banker of Paris, said some 18 millions money of France with interest at 5% per annum. And that's taken from Treaties and Other International Acts of the United States of America, edited by Hunt Miller, Volume 2, Documents 1 through 40, uh, uh, 1776 to 17, uh, 1818, Washington. And that's by the U.S. Government Printing Office. 
So King George financed both sides of the War of Independence and they set up the first bankruptcy with this treaty. And because on the 1st of January, 1788, they went bankrupt. And, uh, and so uh, the, uh, if you think about it, the uh, debt was doable on the, pay, on the 1st of January, 1788. They created the first bankruptcy, bankruptcy inter international law, 70 years. United States emerged from bankruptcy, 1788 plus 70 years equals 1858. It only took three years before the Masonic Satanists uh, to facilitate the next bankruptcy. Three years later, March 27th, 1861, the southern states walked out of Congress, and the Battle of Fort Sumter was uh, uh, April 12th to the 14th of 1861, which some people say is a false flag operation. Very well could have been, but who knows. And uh, this is taken from the North Carolina Charter, 1663. Yielding and paying yearly to us, our heirs and successors, for the same the yearly rent of 20 marks of lawful money of England at the Feast of All Saints, yearly forever, that's the day after Halloween, the first payment thereof to begin and be made on the Feast of All Saints, which shall be on the year of our Lord, 1000. 665 and also the fourth part of all gold and silver ore which will uh, with the limits aforesaid shall from time to time happen to be found and so that's in the north carolina charter of 1663 this is what that charter covered you know a whole bunch of land granted under the uh, the uh, dark green is granted under the 1663 charter and there was another one that was added in 1665 which covers a whole bunch of land and this is the Declaration of Rights of 1776, North Carolina Constitution, and for, provided further that nothing herein contained shall affect the titles or possessions of individuals holding or claiming under the laws heretofore enforced, or grants heretofore made by the late King George II, or his predecessors, or the late lords or proprietors, or any of them. And so they just reaffirmed all those debts, okay? All those debts are still in place, and they're in place to this day, people. This is the Constitution for the United States of America. Um, the uh, uh, Article 6, all debts contracted and engagement entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States under the Constitution as under the Confederation. And uh, this is a Supreme Court case. This is uh, the Society and Etc. versus the town of New Haven uh, at 8 wheat 464. This is like late 1700s, early 1800s. Um, in Tarrant versus Taylor, it was stated that the dissolution of the regal government no more destroyed the rights of the church to possess and enjoy the property which belonged to it than it did the right of any other corporation or individual to his or its own property. And then it goes on, it says, all contracts re and rights respecting property remain unchanged by the revolution. And so all of that is still in place to this day. The Queen of England, Elizabeth the bitch, no disrespect to dogs intended, and her predecessors, she's, remember, she's arch-treasurer and prince-elector of the Holy Roman Empire and the United States of America. She's a Satanist. And, uh, um, and her predecessors have been conspiring to reimpose their military dictatorship on America again. See the first United States is a Crown Colony video. Some people say the queen is just a figurehead. It's true, there are two crowns, and the Queen's crown has ER superimposed it. But in Canada, when they assault you in their satanic kangaroo so-called court, it's always in her name because she is the arch-treasurer of the Holy Roman Empire. She is the one that's responsible for the finances. That's where it's all coming from, people. And Elizabeth is now the arch-treasurer and pr prince-elector of the Holy Roman Empire and of the United States of America. So slave trading, the Dutch West India Company was involved in it, the Royal Africa Trading Company. These are all crown corporations that are set up uh, to promote the agenda of the Vatican. That's exactly what it's all about. The slave trade is directly connected to the Vatican. Jesuits wanted to create the scenario for the Civil War. They wanted to convert citizenship into the opposite of what the Founding Fathers intended. And they wanted to create their own and operated United Nations. The War of 1812 was orchestrated to facilitate the disappearance of the true Article 13 and Amendment. See the bar members' videos, one, two, and three. 
United States of America now includes the Philippines, Japan, the European com countries liberated during World War II, France, Holland, Belgium, Germany, Austria, Italy, Iraq, now Iraq and Kuwait and Afghanistan, North African countries that uh, have now revolted include Libya and, and Egypt, and most of China revolted in the 50s. And so uh, with Jesuit help, uh, they created the circumstance that precipitated the War of uh, Independence, uh, uh, the refusal of King George III to allow the monies to operate an honest money system, which freed the ordinary man from the clutches of the money manipulators. The Jesuits and the Vatican is really the source of all of that, was probably the prime cause of the revolution. Used, they used Vatican money to finance the War of Independence. Both sides of it, people. The War of Independence was promoted by Jesuits. See Rulers of Evil by Tupper Saucy. And, uh, and, uh, and two years. Okay, this is uh, George III, Chapter 12, in 1778. That's two years after the Declaration of Independence. Whereas taxation by the Parliament of Great Britain for the purpose of raising a revenue in His Majesty's colonies, provinces, and plantations in North America has been found by experience to occasion great uneasiness and disorders uh, that from and after the passing of this act, the King and Parliament of Great Britain will not impose any duty, tax, or assessment, whatever, payable in any of the colonies, provinces, or plantations in North America or the West Indies, except only such duties as it may be expedient to impose for the regulation of commerce. Well, they knew that was going to happen all along. That's exactly what planned. It, it took only two years for them to pass this fictitious Call of Law Act. And meanwhile, they, they, they murdered all sorts of people and they got a treaty that got the Vatican involved. That's exactly what happened. Give me liberty or give me death was a statement that was made by uh, uh, Patrick Henry, Henry after he witnessed a man flogged to death for refusing to take a license. King George's Satanist order takers doing their job. A license is a contract. So they're shoving their satanic law merchant contracts down your throat. That's exactly what they did. That's exactly what they do today. Uh, uh, as the contract is a right given by some competent authority to do an act without which such authority would be illegal. They're converting a right into a privilege is what they're doing. Uh, uh, the, the instrument uh, or writing which secures this right is also called a license. A license is expressed or implied. An express license, which in direct terms authorizes the performance of a certain act as a license to keep a tavern by public authority. An, ex an implied license is one, though not expressly given, may be presumed from the acts of the party having the right to give it. Like filing fees, okay? They're an excise tax, and it's a license. They're converting a right into a privilege. That's the Satanist bail priests in the so-called courts. License tax cases, U.S. Supreme Court. The requirement of payment of such licenses is only a mode of imposing taxes on the licensed business. And the prohibition or the penalties under carrying on the business without license is only a mode of enforcing the payment of such taxes. The recognition by the acts of Congress of the power and right of the states to tax, control, and regulate any business carrying on within its limits is entirely consistent with the intention on the part of Congress to tax such business for national purposes. That's what these Satanists do, is they assault you with their commerce. That's exactly what they do. In the first United States as a Crown Colony video, it was shown that British and American financiers are trying to overthrow the Constitution to merge the United States of America with other nations under a world government run by the Crown. Watch the first United States as a Crown video. In 1921, this is about the Council on Foreign Relations. This is about the financiers, people. In 1921, Edward Mandela House and his friends formed the Council on Foreign Relations whose purpose right from its conception was to destroy the freedom and independence of the United States and lead the country into a one world government. In the late 1920s, important financing from the CFR came from the Rockefeller Foundation and the Carnegie Foundation. In 1940, at the invitation of President Roosevelt, members of the CFR gained domination over the State Department and they've maintained this domination ever since. This is a quote by Rear Admiral Chesper Ward, who was a member of the CFR for 16 years. The most powerful clique in this elitist groups is one has have one objective in common. They want to bring about the surrender of the sovereignty of the national dependence independence of the United States. A second clique of the international members of the CFR comprises the Wall Street international bankers and their key agents. 
primarily they want the world banking monopoly from whatever power ends up in the control of the global government. Uh, uh, this is from Tragedy and Hope by Carol Quigley, who was a history professor at Georgetown University and member of the CFR. And I would like to add here that Georgetown University is a Jesuit owned and operated university. Quote, the CFR is the American branch of a society which originated in England and which believes that national boundaries should be obliterated and a one world rule established. The Trilateral Commission. Uh, the, the Trilateral Commission's roots stem from a book uh, entitled uh, Between Two Ages, written by Zbigniew Brzezinski in 1970. In his book, Brzezinski praised Marxism, thought of the United States as obsolete, and praised the formation of a one-world government. His thinking closely parallels that of the CFR founder, Edward Mandrell House. Uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski's Between Two Ages was published in 1970 while he was professor in New York City. David Rockefeller from the Rockefeller Foundation people read the book and in 1973 launched the new Trilateral Commission. Other groups with same objectives, the Bilderbergers, that's a worldwide group, Skull and Bones, the Royal Institute on International Affairs, that's in all the British Commonwealth countries, the Canadian Institute on International Affairs is in Canada. Uh, in the kangaroo so-called courts in every United Nations country, they should be saying in every United Nations country that the queen is the complainant, but we can't have that because figure, people would figure out what's happening. Instead, they hide behind their local crown corporation, state of Texas, uh, in Texas, and, and uh, under their satanic unidroit, which is unconstitutional. Unidroit stands for Unification of Private Law. And, and the website says the 63 countries have adopted it and it's designed to be automatically implemented. Canada and the United States have been signatories to the Unidroit Treaty for over 30 years. Unidroit website says nothing about Texas or Arizona, any of the American states or the Canadian provinces. Therefore, the Unidroit application of the American in the American states and the Canadian provinces is only in federal areas. Unidroit covers negotiable instruments, civil procedures, secured transactions, legal status of women, maintenance obligations, contracts, banking law, and much more. It covers mandatory insurance for motor vehicles. Why do you? Where do you think that's coming from? Anything related to marriage, divorce, and children? Watch the Unidroit video. Watch the first United States is a crown video. I'm sorry, is a crown uh, a colony video. Anything America. Uh, um, is involving motor vehicles or the courts or the banks or finance falls under Unidroit uh, if it applies only, uh, all of it applies only to U.S. citizens and resident aliens. Uh, this is Bond versus United States, a U.S. Supreme Court case in 2014, but Madison insisted that just because this power is given to Congress, it did not follow that the treaty power was absolute and unlimited. The President and the Senate lacked the power to dismember the empire. For example, because the exercise of the power must be consistent with the object of the delegation. The object of treaties in Madison's oft-repeated formulation is the regulation of intercourse with foreign nations and is external. Today, it is enough to highlight some of the structural and historical evidence suggesting that the treaty uh, power can be used to arrange intercourse with other nations, but not to regulate purely domestic affairs. The government of the United States is one of limited powers. It can exercise authority over no subjects except those which have been delegated. Congress cannot by legislation enlarge the federal jurisdiction, nor can it be enlarged under the treaty making power. U.S. Supreme Court again, New or uh, Mayor of New Orleans versus United States. This is taken from uh, jurisdiction under federal over federal areas within the states. It's a report for the, of the Interdepartmental Committee for the Study of Jurisdiction over Federal Areas Within the States, Part 2, a text of the law of the legislative jurisdiction submitted to the Attorney General and transmitted to the President in June of 1957. Um, and it's talking about the international law rule, federalizes state civil law, including common law. Rule serves to federalize not only the statutory, but the common law of a state. Uh, uh, the civil laws affected in an exclusive uh, area of exclusive federal jurisdiction are federal law, notwithstanding their derivation from state laws, and causes arising under such laws may be brought in or removed to federal court under sections 24 or 28 of the former Judicial Code, now sections 1331 and 1441 of Title 28, uh, uh, giving jurisdiction to such courts and civil actions arising under the laws of the United States. 
at National Mutual Insurance Company in District of Columbia versus Tidewater Transfer Company, the U.S. Supreme Court. We therefore decline to overrule the opinion of Chief Justice Marshall. We hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article 3 of the Constitution. In other words, cases between citizens of the district and those of the, of the states are not included in the catalog of controversies over which Congress can give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article 3. In other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of District of Columbia and through their plenary power. That's military dictatorship, people. Nationally covers those citizens, even when in one of the several states, as those the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. If any citizen, this is where it's codified, 26 U.S.C. Section 7701, uh, 39, and also it, it could be it, they moved it, it might be at 7408C. Uh, if any citizen or resident of the United States does not reside in and is not found in any of the United States judicial district, such citizen or resident shall be treated as residing in the District of Columbia for purchases of purposes of any provision of this title to A, jurisdiction of the court, or B, enforcement of summons. Everything they do is a fraud. It's a lie. They assault you with their corporation, a fraud. They criminally convert your name. It's a fraud. They assault you with their corporate codes, rules, and regulations, a fraud. They call their, their so-called court as a fraud. They convert your postal address with a zip code, another fraud. They convert your citizenship into a U.S. citizen, another fraud. A fraud is an intentional perversion of the truth for a purpose of inducing another into relying upon it part with some valuable thing belonging to him or surrender a legal right. Uh, when one conveys a false impression uh, uh, by disclosure of some facts and concealment of others, such concealment is a false representation that what is disclosed is the whole truth. Uh, fraud and deceit may arise from silence where there is a duty to speak as well as from speaking an untruth. You're the father, you're of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews or Christians, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's found in the Bible, both of those. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the whoremongers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's also found in the Bible. Are you afraid of standing up against these Satanists? Well, then that sounds like you're fearful, and I don't know if you're going to do too well on Judgment Day. Uh, this is Pomblin's Law Dictionary, 1835 edition, under the definition of Mort Main. And it talks about who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy, well, they still are, to be bound and uh, uh, bound in conscience to account for incest decay use, and it is to these inventions that our uh, protect practitioners are indebted to introduce of use and trusts the foundation of modern conveyancing. Decay use means a use you fruct. Okay, a use is in the 1800s it was called a use, and and that is a use you fruct under Roman law. This is all coming from the Vatican. Courts of equity are now satanic, but it's still the clergy that run it. It's Satanist clergy. They're using the Sestake Trust to transfer land in 1835, just like they are today. It was under a feudal system, just like it is today. And this is taken from that same definition of Mort Main. In the case of tenants set up crosses on their land, the badges of knights, templars, and hospitaliers, in order to protect them from the feudal demands of their lord by virtue of the privileges of those religious and military orders. Okay, and so this is all coming, the religious is coming from the Vatican, and the military, that's coming from the Vatican too. Okay, it's all coming from the Vatican. And the crosses are satanic symbol. A cross is a Masonic Illuminati symbol where they're bragging about that the cross is how they killed the Son of God. And uh, is your Christian church a 501c3 tax-exempt organization? If it is, then it's not a church, and it's satanic. Watch my churchianity videos. All 501c3 tax-exempt organizations are not churches, are actually temples of Baal. Mark Passio, former Satanist priest, says that two-thirds of Americans are practicing Satanists. See his YouTube channel. There's a Baal temple right there. There's another Baal temple. There's another Baal temple, and there's another one. 
And there's another one. Uh, a prominent Albert Pike was a prominent Luciferian and Masonic leader, Confederate general. He wrote Morals and Dogma, predicted world three world wars, talked about consolidating the entire planet, people, places, and things into the hands of one entity, is sometimes referred to as the Antichrist or the God of Freemasonry and the Illuminati, Lucifer and Satan. And that's found at Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike at page 321. Look it up, people. World War I and World War II exactly and happened, ex happened exactly as predicted, and we're now building up to World War III as predicted by Albert Pike. There's two levels of Masons, in the, uh, uh, and the first level goes to the 33rd degree, and that's what most of the people are in. The second level is only available to the European aristocracy, and there's been a Masonic influence in America from the beginning. The Vatican influence has also been there from the beginning, uh, and that's Sea Rulers of Evil by Tupper Saucy. And there's his book. That's the book cover uh, by uh, Rulers of Evil by uh, uh, Tupper Saucy. I highly recommend it. I've read it myself. It's a good book. And it lets you know about the Jesuits. Another thing about the Jesuits is, uh, is the uh, Nazi SS, uh, uh, which uh, stands for Knights of Cetus Sacrorum and Knights of the Holy See. It was founded by Archbishop Cardinal Pacelli, Superior General uh, uh, of, the, of the Jesuits. And the first leader was uh, Reichsfuhrer Himmler. And uh, they've uh, and the headquarters in Berlin in 1945 up to 1945, and since then they moved it to Washington D.C. And now it's called the Secret Service. Uh, the Nazi SS, also known as SS, a shortened uh, name of the Knights of the Holy See, is a, a Roman Catholic spiritual and military order first formed in 1933 based completely on the Jesuit order structure uh, upon the signing of the Sacred Reich Concordat. That's uh, the Concordat of 1933, people, specifically through the application of Articles 112, uh, 15, 21, and 33, with the enaction of Clause C of the Sacred Supplement of the Concordat between Franz von Papen of, on behalf of Nazi Germany and um, Cardinal Pacelli, who was the Black Pope. Um, anyways, um, the Concordat of 1933 with Hitler created the SS, a priest clothing and a hat, nun's habit, our military uniforms. Uh, Canada, U.S., and many other countries have signed on to this pact. That means, if you think about it, that a military uniform is all the military uniforms come from the Vatican. Uh, martial law, military uniforms all fall under, Ro fall under Roman law in the Vatican. The Lateran Pact with Mussolini uh, is another one where uh, uh, Mussolini agreed to protect the Vatican, and Canada, the United States, and many other countries have signed on to that pact. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security is a subsidiary of the Secret Service. There's a Secret Service in the United Kingdom. Why would that be a surprise? Because it's all the same company. The Secret Service is a subsidiary of the Treasury Department. The Treasury Department is owned by the International Monetary Fund. The International Monetary Fund is owned by the World Bank. They're making war on us. This is perpetual warfare. They've imposed martial law rule on us since at least 1932. Uh, see the martial law is here video. Declaration of Independence says they're making war on us and the cause of necessities for taking off arms. See, the uh, uh, it's planned, it's calculated, it's coming from the Jesuits and the Vatican. It's satanic. See the first United States is a crown colony video. There we have... The, the, the most recent Pope Francis or Pimp Francis or Pope, I don't know, Pimp, I think. Anyways, he's kissing David Rockefeller's hand, okay? And so the, he is in there as thick as anything. He's the former Jesuit black Pope, actually, if anybody knows. Um, the uh, Pope Francis found guilty of child trafficking, rape, and murder. Uh, yesterday, defendants Pope Francis Bergoglio, Catholic Jesuit Superior Adolfo uh, Pachon, and Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, were found guilty of rape, torture, murder, and trafficking children. Five judges of the International Common Law Court of Brussels uh, of Justice in Brussels determined that the crimes occurred as recently as 2010. Since March, over 48 eyewitnesses have come forward to testify before these, uh, this court. Uh, the Ninth Circle uh, Satanic Cult is said to do child sacrifices at Roman Catholic cathedrals in Montreal, New York, Rome, Scotland, London, uh, Carnarvon, Castle, and Wales. 
undisclosed French Chateau in Holland and at Canadian Catholic and Anglican Indian Residential Schools in Kamloops, British Columbia and Brantford, Ontario. The Ninth Circle Satanic uh, Child Sacrifice Cult is believed to use privately owned forest groves in U.S., Canada, France, Holland for their human hunting parties. For the global elites, including members of the royal families, teens were said to be obtained by the mafia, then stripped naked, raped, hunted down, and killed. The chief prosecutor stated the Catholic Church is the world's largest corporation and appears to be in collusion with the mafia, governments, and police, and courts worldwide. The two uh, adolescent uh, women told the, the, uh, the court that uh, Pope Francis raped them while participating in child sacrifices. Eight other eyewitnesses confirmed their allegations of being witnesses to rape and child sacrifices. The Ninth Circle Satanic Cult is said to uh, take place during the springs um, of uh, 2009 and 10 in rural Holland and Belgium. Last month, an investigator for the Irish Garda Police Force testified before five judges and 27 jury members that marks on the bones of nearly 796 children found in an Irish Roman Catholic nun septic tank indicated that they had been ritually killed. The witnesses test the witness testified that forensic experts had confirmed the decapitation and dismember of the babies of the mass grave resembled the usual signs of ritualistic murder or child sacrifice. What an abomination. These people are an absolute abomination. And if we don't take care of this, then we will be held accountable. Okay, people, we have to understand that we will be held accountable if we don't do everything we can to put a stop to this. The Vatican is satanic. In the 1990s, Father Malachi Martin, a Catholic monk, was on Coast to Coast AM talk radio program with Art Bell, and he said at that time the Vatican was taken over by Lucifer in 1955. Father Malachi Martin died shortly thereafter under mysterious circumstances. Pope Francis was previously the Jesuit uh, general, the Black Pope. Pope Francis is not talking about a one world religion. Hello, people. It's about time we started waking up. Uh, this is actually taken from a YouTube video. This is the Catholic Church exposed Satan in the Vatican. This is um, uh, taken from a YouTube video. The address is up at the top if you want to go and find it. It's uh, Easter Vigil 2012 at St. Peter's Basilica. And uh, there was uh, someone uh, singing a uh, uh, chant uh, during this YouTube video. And this is the what they were saying. The red at the top is the Latin. They were speaking it in Latin. And the, and the yellow is the English translation. And it says, I say, O Lucifer, who will never be defeated, Christ is your son. Okay, they're devil worshipers. They are Satanists. It's an absolute abomination. That's why they're uh, uh, ritually sacrificing children and drinking their blood and doing all of this stuff. And we need to put a stop to it, people. There's the false prophet, in my opinion. The Pope claims you're not Christian if you own a gun. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what he would like. The false prophet would love that. And there's the false prophet. So, uh, anyways, everybody needs to know that there is the false prophet. I think that's the false prophet that's talked about in the book of Revelations. The Jesuit oath. Okay, this is the oath that he took to become a Jesuit. And... Um, and that all Jesuits take. The superior speaks, My son, herefore you have been taught to act at the dissembler among Roman Catholics to be a Roman Catholic and to be a spy even among your own brethren, to believe no man, to trust no man, among the reformers to be a reformer, among a Huguenot to be a Huguenot, among a Calvinist to be a Calvinist. That sounds like they're teaching them to be a liar. Okay, that's Satanism. They're, they're teaching them, they're Satanists, they're teaching them to be liars. Among the Protestants, generally to be a Protestant, obtaining their confidence to seek even to preach from their pulpits and to denounce with all vehemence in your nature our holy religion and the Pope. Gee, that sounds like lying. And to even to descend so low as to become a Jew among Jews, that you might be enabled to gather together all information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier of the Pope. To be a liar, to do anything, literally, and that's what this this is only page one of this whole. This is the preamble. <laughs> you have been taught to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between communities, provinces, states that were at peace, 
to incite them to deeds of blood involving them of war with each other. Gee, that sounds like the fictitious war on terror and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries. Gee, that sounds like the fictitious war on terror, the false flag operations. Gee, why is it a surprise that Jesuit University, Georgetown University, is what they use to populate government offices in Washington, D.C.? that were independent and prosperous, cultivating the arts and the sciences and enjoying the blessings of peace to take sides with the combatants to act secretly with your brother Jesuit who might be engaged on the other side, but openly opposed to that with which you might be connected, only that the church might be a gainer in the end, in the conditions fixed in the treaties for peace and that the end justifies the means. Gee, that sounds like the treaties that were signed when the War of Independence was over, or actually it wasn't over. It was just supposed to be over so the Vatican could regroup and come back again. And this is more of the preamble, people. You have reached all, you received all your instructions heretofore as a novice, a neophyte, and have served as co adjurer confessor, and priest. But you have not yet been invested with all of this necessary to command in the army of Loyola in the service of the Pope. You must serve at the proper time as the instrument and executioner, as directed by your superiors, for none can command here who has not consecrated his labors with the blood of the heretic. For without the shedding of blood, no man can be saved. Therefore, to fit yourself for your work and make your own salvation sure, you will, in addition, in addition to your former oath of obedience to your order and obedience, allegiance to the Pope, repeat after me okay so they're saying here think about it they're saying you have to murder people that's exactly what they're saying you have to murder people and here's the oath i blank now in the presence of almighty god the blessed virgin mary the blessed michael the archangel the blessed saint john the baptist and the holy apostles saint peter and saint paul and all the saints and sacred hosts of heaven and to the ghostly father, the superior general of the Society of Jesus, founded by St. Ignis, Ignatius Loyola, and in the pontificate of Paul III, and continued to the present, do by the womb of the Virgin, the matrix of God, and the rod of Jesus Christ, declare and swear that His Holiness, the Pope, is Christ's vice regent, that it is true and only head of the Catholic or universal church throughout the earth, and that by virtue of the keys of binding and loosing given to his holiness by my Savior, Jesus Christ, he hath power to depose heretical kings, princes, states, commonwealths, and governments, all being illegal without his sacred confirmation, that they may be that may safely be destroyed. Now, interesting thing here is, is that recently they had to get the Pope permission to make war on ISIS. Okay, why do you think that is so? That's because of the Jesuit oath. It says it right here. All being illegal without his sacred confirmation that they may safely be destroyed. Okay. They have to get Jesuit permission to, to make war. Okay. So the Jesuits are working on both sides. There's Jesuits over there in the ISIS camps and there's Jesuits here. And they're, they're, they're fomenting this war. That's exactly what they're doing. There's Jesuits creating the false flag operations. There's Jesuits creating this so-called war on terror. It's, it's all coming from the Vatican. Therefore, to the utmost of my power, I shall and will defend the doctrine of His Holiness's right and custom against all usurpers of the heretical or Protestant authority, whatever, especially the Lutheran of Germany, Holland and Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and the now pretended authority of the churches of England and Scotland and, and branches of the same now established in Ireland and on the continent of America and elsewhere, and all adherents in regard that they be usurped and heretical, opposing the sacred mother church of Rome, I do now renounce and disown any allegiance as due to any heretical king, prince, or state, named Protestants or liberals, or obedience to any of the laws, magistrates, or officers. I do further declare that I will help assist and advise all or any of his holiness's agents in any place wherever I shall be, in Switzerland, Germany, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, England, Ireland, or America, or in any other kingdom or territory, I shall come to and do my utmost to extirpate the heretical Protestants or liberals' doctrines and to destroy all their pretended powers, regal or otherwise. 
I do further promise and declare that I will have no opinion or will of my own. Gee, that sounds like an order taker or any mental reservation, whatever, even uh, as a corpse or cadaver, uh, but will unhesitatingly obey each and every command that I may receive from my superiors, uh, order taker in the militia of the Pope and of Jesus Christ. I further promise and declare that I will, when the opportunity present, make and wage relentless war secretly or openly against all heretics, Protestants, and liberals, as I am directed to do, to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, that I will hang, waste, boil, flay, strangle, bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women, and crush the infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate them forever, their execrable race." Gee, that sounds like murder. That when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poison cup, the strangulating cord, the steel of the poignard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of the honor, rank, dignity, or authority of the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed to do so by any agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus. Gee, that sounds like murder. Confirmation of which I hereby dedicate my life, my soul, and all my corporal powers. And with this dagger, which I now receive, I will subscribe my name written uh, in my own blood, in testimony whereof, and should I make proof false or weaken in, any de in my determination, may my brethren and fellow soldiers of the militia of the Pope cut off my hands and my feet and my throat from ear to ear, my belly opened and sulfur burned therein with all the punishment that can be inflicted upon me on earth and my soul be tortured by demons in an eternal hell forever. Well, they're the ones that are going to go to hell, quite frankly. Uh, all of which I do swear by the blessed Trinity and sacred sacraments, which I now to receive, to perform on my part, to keep inviolable, and do call all the heavenly and glorious hosts of heaven to witness the blessed sacrament of the Eucharist, and witness the same further with my name written uh, with the point of this dagger, dipped in my own blood and sealed in the face of this holy covenant. Uh, and this is taken from the book Subterranean Rome by Charles Didier, translated from the French and published in New York in 1843. Uh, Dr. Alberto Rivero escaped from the Jesuit order in 1967, and he describes his Jesuit oath in exactly the same way as it appears in this book. The Jesuit oath of induction is also recorded in the Congressional Record of the USA, House Bill 1523, contested election case of Eugene C. Bonniewell against Thomas S. Butler, February 15, 1913, page 3215 to 3216. Look it up, people. These people are Satanists. They're diabolically evil. They will murder you in a heartbeat. They will, they are just the most, uh, uh, they do, they're the ones that are responsible for the so-called war on terror, for this WW3 that's building. Uh, uh, is there any doubt that these Jesuits are satanic? Is there any doubt that they're serious? Is there any doubt that they have the will to carry out their satanic deeds? Is there any doubt that they're doing these sorts of things every day and they're teaching others about their Satanism as well? What do you think that Georgetown University and the numerous other Jesuit universities there are around the world are doing? Is there any doubt that bar members are satanic? See, bar members one and two videos, and three, actually. Georgetown University is one of many Jesuit universities around the world. This is uh, taken from RT. This is a, uh, a, a, a an article about vows and blood and branding with fire. Franciscan nun opens up about violence and torture in the convent. And there's YouTube videos that are done by nuns that are explaining some of the stuff that's going on in there. These people... These Jesuits and the Vatican is satanic. That's exactly what they are. And these are the people that are coming out telling about it. And uh, uh, who knows what's going to happen to them because of it. But, but at least they got the word out. When plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men in a society over the course of time, they create for themselves a legal system that authorizes it and a moral cord that glorifies it. And that's best yet. Uh, the Magna Carta is similar to a treaty after the War of Independence. The Treaty of Paris was signed. These Satanists have no intention of abiding by their treaties. These Satanists are imposing perpetual warfare, and their so-called treaties mean absolutely nothing. Making a treaty with them just gives them an opportunity to regroup and come back at you. See the first United States as a Crown Colony video. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace when there is no peace. 
And this is all taken from the Bible. There are no peace as long as these Satanists are in power. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. So how can you tell Obama's lying? His lips are moving. All lies are satanic. Obama's a Satanist. False flag operations are satanic. Fake news is satanic. Obama's doing false flag operations and his bought and paid news media are all satanic. The fraudulent, uh, fictitious war on terror is satanic. Obama is making war all over the planet. That's more Satanism. This is taken from uh, um, <clears throat> uh, the website that actually the New York Times admits that virtually every major news organization allows the news to be censored by government officials. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, there's a little bit closer. And there's the website, the source, the second yellow line there, highlighting uh, Michael Snyder, BLN contributing writer, and there's the website. And so look it up, people. Uh, the following quote comes from the recent article in the New York Times, and the quotations come back redacted, stripped of colorful metaphors, colloquial language, or anything even mildly provocative. Uh, they are sent by email from the Obama headquarters in Chicago to reporters who have interviewed uh, campaign officials under one major condition. The press office has to veto over what statements can be quoted and attributed by name. And it goes on. Uh, most reporters are desperate to pick the brains of the president's top strategists, grudgingly agree. After the interviews, they review their notes, check their tape recorders, and send in the juiciest sound bites for review. The, the verdict from the campaign, an operation that provides itself on staying consistently on script, is often no, Barack Obama does not approve this message. And so this is all coming from, this is a campaign, obviously. Uh, it was maybe the election, last election campaign, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, it's difficult to find a news outlet that has not agreed to, to quote approval, albeit reluctantly. Uh, um, organizations like Bloomberg, the Washington Post, Vanity Fair, Reuters, and the New York Times have all consented to interviews under such terms. So, so it's, it's fake news, okay? And and so that's Obama is satanic. Obama is a tyrant. Tyranny is satanic. America has a bigger percentage of the people and population in prison than any other country all on on the planet. That's all satanic. If a man be found stealing any of his brethren of the children of Israel, maketh merchandise of him. That's exactly what they're doing, people. They're making merchandise of you. They're converting you into a corporation so then they can sell you into prison. Um, and then the thief shall die. Thou shalt put evil away from among you. We need to put this evil away from among us, people. An elective despotism was not the government we fought for. The president is not elected. He is selected. They that give up essential liberty to obtain a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor any safety. When injustice becomes law, then resistance becomes duty. Necessity is the plea for every infringement of human freedom. It is the argument of tyrants. It is the creed of slaves. Okay, so if, you, if you're in favor of the war on terror, then you're a slave. Okay, necessity is the plea of for every infringement on human freeman, freedom. It is the argument of tyrants. It is the creed of slaves. For it is a truth which uh, the experience of ages has attested that the people are always most in danger when the means of injuring their rights are in possession of those to whom they entertain the least suspicion. I prefer dangerous freedom over peaceful slavery. If Satan is to be bound, the book of Revelations is now. This is what's happening right now. If Satan is to be bound, it is because there are Satanists everywhere. All lies, all fraud or lies are satanic. These satanic so-called courts are full of fraud. These satanic so-called courts have replaced the law of the land with their satanic law merchants, so they can get you into one of their satanic so-called contracts. All warfare is satanic. Is there anything more satanic than sending a bunch of people off to a field to kill each other? Who is a liar but he that denieth? So what is an antichrist? Who is a liar but he that denieth what Je that Jesus is the Christ? He is an antichrist. He denieth the Father and the Son. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of antichrist. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. The more we do to you, the less you believe we're doing it. Screw the UN. 
Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. And that's true. That's true. That is Jefferson's seal. I like it. Um, the book of Revelations now. Most self-proclaimed Christians are actually Satanists. See the churchianity videos. Most so-called Christian churches are satanic. The cross is their symbol. They have 501c3 tax-exempt status. See the churchianity videos. They cannot speak the truth, but are forced to speak half-truths and lies. See the churchianity videos. Mark Passio, a former Satanist priest, says that two-thirds of Americans are practicing Satanists. All bank loans are a fraud. There are no bank loans. There is no federal debt. All foreclosures by banks are a fraud. The U.S. Congress is bought and paid for by the banksters. The banksters with their bought and paid for Obama and their bought and paid for U.S. Congress are in process of setting up a blood sacrifice to their satanic gods, and they'll get the American Satanists to help them. We can. What can we do? We can work with our friends and neighbors to get the United Nations out of America and Canada anywhere that wants to be free. The United Nations is owned and operated by the Crown and their Vatican handlers. We can educate ourselves about what a common law jury is and what the law of the land is. We can demand a common law jury of our peers, uh, and that's a trial by jury, not a trial with jury. Trial by jury is where the jury calls the witnesses, questions the witnesses, jury determines the law and the facts and the matter, and even pronounces sentence. The judge is in there to advise the jury on different points of law, and they can ignore the judge if they want. We can refuse to participate in their de facto system. We can use any other money system but Federal Reserve notes, Bank of Canada notes, Bank of England notes. We can use qualified endorsements on all checks and negotiable instruments for deposit, for credit on account, or in exchange for non-redeemable bank notes at face value. There's a fool born every minute. Are you one of them? Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about you, seeking whom he, he may devour. And they're everywhere. Don't forget to watch the other videos talked about to get a proper understanding of what is happening and how it's happening. Upcoming videos, uh, asserting sovereignty, Cosby, the judicial whore in Texas, Lowe, the judicial whore in Texas, Williams, the judicial whore in Texas, Fort Worth pigs, Kerrville pigs, Alberta sheriff pigs, national versus federal, and fake news. Uh, copies of these documents can be found in my private group at Yahoo called Administering Your Public Servants. I have videos that private, uh, private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for a donation. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs. Um, send me an email for particulars. Send me an email for other copies of documents to, uh, to these email addresses. I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. I hope you got something out of it. And uh, have a real nice day.